Get your King James Bible and turn to the book of Isaiah. This is going to be the continuation of the Isaiah commentary series. This is going to be on chapter 42. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let's go to verse 1 and start reading. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Now this word Gentile, whether it's in the Hebrew or in the Greek, is sometimes the same word is translated as Gentiles, and then other times the same exact word is translated as nations. In the Greek, it is the word ethnos, where we get the word ethnic group. And in the Hebrew, it's the word goyim or goy, singular or plural. And it just means nations. I mean, if you were, you know, when, when God promised Abraham he'd make, make him the father of many nations, it's the same word as the word they use for Gentiles here. I mean, the King James translators were not consistent. And I'm not going to say it was an error or it's mistranslated. I'm not going to say that. Sometimes I think the Lord hides things so that the lukewarm just don't get it. That's my opinion. Or he doesn't want the wicked to get it. But the modern church world will say, well, you know, Gentiles just means non-Israel. And that's not true. I mean, they could just as easily have translated where God promised Abraham to make, uh, you know, God promised Abraham. He said, I will make you a father of many Gentiles. Is Abraham the father of Gentiles? He was the father of Israel. He was the father of many nations. He was the father of Israel. Isaac, Jacob, Israel. He was the father of Ishmael. And then through Isaac, his grand, his uh, son, his uh, Abraham's grandsons became Israel and Esau Edom. So he was the father of many nations. But it's the same word as translated as Gentiles. Gentiles does not necessarily mean non-Jew. That's another lie that the church world foists upon us, thinking, oh, well, we're just a bunch of Gentiles. We're just non-Israel. That doesn't mean that. It can mean that, but it doesn't always necessarily mean that. There are times when, you know, it's the same word used for Israel. The nations of Israel. They didn't want to say the Gentiles of Israel. So, you know, the King James just isn't consistent with that. And if you don't believe me, go to the um, Blue Letter Bible or somebody like that and look up the word nation and nations and look up every single time that word appears or Gentiles. And sometimes you'll see it's sometimes it's used for Israel, sometimes it's used for non-Israel. So, all right. I've got an entire Bible study on that if anybody's interested. I don't know how long I'll be on YouTube, but hey, we'll try. Verse 2. Uh, let's see. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto the truth. 
Now, where do we read about a bruised reed? Well, the first time that I can remember is in the book of 2 Kings 18, verse 21. One of the servants of the Assyrians were speaking to the people of Jerusalem, and he's trying to convince them to surrender. But... Uh, I think the majority of the people were relying upon Egypt, the hand of Egypt, instead of the hand of the Lord. So let's read. Now behold, thou trustest upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt unto all that trust on him. So they're talking about this reed. If, if you lean upon it, it's going to break into something sharp and it's going to go through your hand. Instead of helping you, it's going to be a hindrance. So, where else do we read about a bruised reed? How about... Matthew chapter 12, verse 9. And when he, Jesus, was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days? That they might accuse him. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? Good question. How much better, uh, how, mu how much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. You didn't want to ever ask Jesus a question trying to trick him. He'd make you look like a hypocrite and a fool every time then said he to the man stretch forth thine hand and he stretched it forth and it was restored restored whole like as the other then the pharisees which were a denomination of the you know who's then the pharisees went out and took counsel against him how they might destroy him instead of rejoicing that a man was restored and healed, they want to kill Jesus. Uh, can you say goats? But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, that's the Greek rendering of the word Isaiah, Verse 18, Behold my servant, Christ, right? Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench till he sent until he send forth judgment unto victory and in his name shall the gentiles trust is there a companion verse to this take 3 guesses and the first two don't count oh yeah matthew 3 uh, verse 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and, lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him, and, lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Okay, let's go back 
to verse 3. A bruised reed, uh, Matthew, I'm sorry, Isaiah 42, verse 3. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Okay, verse 4. He shall not fall, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. All right, who created all things? Colossians 1.16 For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and in invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. All right, how about John chapter 1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay. All right, let's go back to Isaiah. Verse 41, verse 5, Thus saith the Lord, thus saith God the Lord, he, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that stretched, stre uh, spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Huh. Where do we read about this? Parallel verse, Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he, Jesus, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord." And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Uh, how about 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18? For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. 
by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. What do you think God, uh, Jesus was doing for the three days that he was dead in the heart of the earth? Read the account of Abraham's bosom. I have a, a Bible study on that if anybody's interested. For three days and three nights, he went down into the heart of the earth and preached to all the Old Testament saints that were in Abraham's bosom, which was a compartment in hell that they were not being tormented. Read about it. It's, it's you know, he taught them that he was the, the, the promise, uh, prophesied Messiah, the Christ. And um, then those that believed, he took them up to heaven. Read about uh, the rich man and Lazarus. You can read about this in uh, the book of Luke, verse uh, chapter 16, around verse 20. You can look it up on your own. So, back to Isaiah 42 and verse 7. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sat that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Therefore the, uh, they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. A new song. How about Revelation 5.9? And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Back to Isaiah 42, verse 11. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing, let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. Who printed the King James Bible? The island of England, Britain, Wales, Scotland, Ireland. Think about it, people. The Greeks, the Greek islands. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holden my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman, I will destroy and devour at once. Oh boy. Isn't that what's going to happen in the end time in Revelation? How about Revelation 19, verse 12? His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Oh boy. Let's go back to Isaiah 42, 14. I have long time holden my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. 
Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands. And I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images that say to the molten images, Ye are our gods. Huh, molten images. Ye are our gods. Yeah, they're going to be they're going to be ashamed in that day. Hear ye deaf and look ye blind that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messengers that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things but thou observest not opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth, for a spoil, and none saith, Restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord? Did not the Lord? It was the Lord that gave Israel and Jacob to the robbers. Think about that in today's world when you see the wicked ruling over the white western world who gave jacob for a spoil and israel to the robbers did not the lord he against whom we have sinned he against whom we have sinned for they would not walk in his ways neither were they obedient unto his law therefore he hath poured upon them the fury of his anger Therefore he hath poured upon them the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him. Yet he laid it not to heart. Well, that's the end of verse uh, chapter 42. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Him and Him alone. In Jesus' precious name, amen.